So here we go again, right? For the sixth time, Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors are going to the NBA Playoffs Championship. Look, and Steph's looking to add another ring to his finger. And whatever you think about Steph Curry, here's the thing that's so amazing is when he was in high school, graduating, he was six foot two, 160 pounds. He wanted to play basketball at Virginia Tech where his dad was outstanding. They wouldn't give him a scholarship because he was too small. Here's a picture of Steph next to LeBron James. The guy looks kind of small. So he goes to Davidson University, 2,000 people. He gets through college, ends up being a se the seventh pick of the NBA draft that year. And since that time, five NBA championship runs, three championships, most valuable player in the league twice. And you know he is the leading three-point shooter of all time, and he is credited with totally changing the game of basketball because of his shooting. If you've read anything about Steph Curry, you know this, that he is working on every aspect of his game all the time. That it's really not his three-point shooting that is the thing behind the thing, it's his intentional mindset. And y'all, I just want us to think for a moment, in all seriousness, what if the people of God went after the things of God with the intentional mindset that the people of the world go after the things of the world, what might happen? I want you to turn with me to Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 21 this morning. And just so you're really clear about even why I've got this basketball in my hand that came out of Peyton's office. And because all the guys who came here earlier are already getting on me about this, I will confess this ball has got a little low on air, okay? It just came out of Peyton's office. That way, this is no deflate gate, Tom Brady, or anything like that this morning. But, but here's why I show you that video of Steph Curry. The Apostle Paul in this passage, there's probably no other passage in Scripture that is so laced with the language of sport. Because when Paul wants to say, I'm trying to make sure that when we say nothing beats knowing Christ, that, that he wants to inspire you to intentionally pursue that. And what does he do? For his culture, he paints a picture of the Olympic athlete who's running. He actually chooses to paint an athletic picture. So to do the passage justice this morning, we're going to talk about Steph Gurry and the Golden State Warriors and what sport is on our mind right now, okay? And you know what's fascinating, y'all? This whole idea about an intentional mindset we've said in this series, mindset matters. You know that if this was a 50-pound ball here and I was doing curls, <laughs> y'all are rude sometime. <laughs> Just try to use your imagination, Okay. If this was a 100-pound ball and I was trying to do some curls, that if I was just doing these, not thinking about them, talking to a girlfriend or something in the gym, you know, um, it wouldn't do as much good if I had this intentional mindset where I was thinking about this huge bicep of mine contracting and pulling this ball up, that actually our mindset matters and our intentionality matters. So I want to ask you all, how many have ever been to like a retreat or a conference? You've gone to a men's retreat or a woman's retreat. Raise your hand really high. You know what I love about going to a retreat? It, it, you know, you get in a different place and you decide we're here to pursue the Lord. We're here because we believe God wants to do something. Now, I want you to know every Sunday I'm showing up. I hope you're showing up because I believe God wants to do something in us. We're not trying to just check off the box here. So I want you to imagine this morning that we're at a retreat. 
we're doing this is a little conference speaking here. And so what I want to do is I want to give us five words this morning. I'm not going to give you homework. I want to give you five words for right now because we pray, Holy Spirit of God, would you do something right now? And I want to give you five words, and we're just going to look at a word, going to talk about the scripture, and then I'm going to just give you a question for you to think about right now, okay? So here we go as we walk through the text. My first word is this. My first word is dissatisfaction. And you're like, what? I'm talking about a healthy dissatisfaction here. I want you to think of it as kind of a holy discontent. Because when we jump into verse 12, Paul says this. Speaking about this mindset of nothing beats knowing Christ, he says, hey, let me be clear. Not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect or completely mature. Even look at verse 13. He says, brothers and sisters, I do not, here's one of our thinking words, I do not regard when I look at my own life and I look at the life of Jesus himself and all that he has for me, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. So, this is why I say dissatisfaction. Paul, probably been a believer for about 30 years when he wrote this. I hope this kind of encourages some of you feel like you're not there yet. Paul says, I I'm not there yet. Um, you know, Steph Curry, interesting thing about Steph is... Uh, even after he has a couple great seasons and he's gonna, is coming to contract renewal time, people were a little hesitant because he had hurt his ankles and um, they, they considered him a long shot. Curry says, this is why each and every day I do something to try and get better, to challenge myself, to learn more about the game, to make my teammates better. For Steph Curry, who does it, here's... Y'all, Paul, in another place, says this. The people of the world, they do it for a perishable wreath. We do it for an imperishable wreath. Steph Curry, I'm telling you, his NBA trophies and rings, they're going to melt, aren't they, one day. He says, every day I'm trying to get better. It was inconceivable in Steph Curry's mind to just coast. And I actually think this. I think it's inconceivable. In Paul's minds, that God, through the work of Jesus Christ, would invest the blood of Jesus in you, that it is inconceivable that God would invest in you incredible spiritual gifts, yes, you, that he would draft you onto his team and just think, Okay, now go be a, can I say that this way, a beer-guzzling spectator in the stands of life. So here's the question I ask for you right now that I want you to take a moment on. The question is this. Do I have a healthy dissatisfaction with my current walk with Jesus? And, and you can think of it this way. When you came in this morning with your Bible in hand, or your cell phone, if that's how you look at your Bible, but did anybody here, anybody, come with your Bible in hand this morning and think, man, I hope Tom gets us in the Word today. Man, I, I, I can't wait to get here because I believe God has a Word for us corporately and a Word individually. I, Anybody just have this sense of, Jesus, i got to know you more. If you don't, let me not say it's okay. But let me ask you just to think about this question right now. And you ask God for, for, for that. God, make me want more, okay? You go ahead and take just a couple minutes. You just close your eyes right now. You and God. Holy Spirit, make us like this psalmist who says, my soul thirsts for God and my flesh yearns for God. Like I'm always thirsty and hungry. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. First word, dissatisfaction. Next word is devotion, okay? Devotion. Paul says, but one thing I 
do. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. But one thing I do. In this phrase, Paul introduces that which took up 90% of his mind. If any of you have ever struggled with obsessions or addictions, you, you understand this. You know, it's said that when you're trying to relate to a person who has an addiction, it's really hard because 90% of their mind, even if they don't realize it, is taken up with their addiction. And so they have this little 10% space for the rest of the world. It's a very frustrating place to be. And Paul says, here's my 90% plus 10 other. Here's the thing I'm structuring all my life around. And yeah, I wonder even for us if it sounds a bit radical to say, nothing beats knowing Christ. So here's the one thing I do. Here's the one thing I'm thinking about every morning when I get up. Here's the one thing that is keeping me awake at night. How can I know him more? You know, this phrase here, forgetting what lies behind and reaching for what lies ahead, Paul chooses phrases in the Greek that are perfectly parallel, precisely and powerfully to paint the picture of a runner. Yo, know, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not exaggerating here when I'm trying to get us to think about Steph Curry and the Warriors and just this whole thing about what does a basketball player do because he paints this picture of a runner that's looking forward, every muscle taut, the head doesn't go behind. And if I was using it today, I, I, I'm, it would be, yo, know, Steph Curry is amazing, like how he tries to make sure and have the exact same form every time. So I, since Paul's trying to paint a picture for y'all, I want you to see this little video, and I want you, we're going to just start playing it of Steph Curry shooting a basketball, and I just want you to see how he keeps trying to, get, when he gets ready to shoot, he's trying to line up his feet the same way every time. He's trying to take that ball and begin his launch from the same place every time, that he's trying to bend his elbow at a 90 degree angle right here every time, that every time when he finishes, he's trying to finish with his arm fully extended and that elbow out ahead of him, that every time he shoots, he puts the ball in the palm of his hand and then finally moves the weight of that ball to his fingertips, that every time he shoots, it's his coming off his four fingers, that every time he shoots, lastly, it's coming off his middle finger, and then he just wants to show off a little. Guys, one thing I do. Steph Curry says, I'm going to shoot a basketball. And he does it for a perishable wreath. And so I just want to ask us to take a moment right now, you and God, and to ask this question. What am I devoting my life to? Now listen, y'all, when... when, when when this question ever comes up, I will tell you, there's all kinds of defenses that come up in us. I, I noticed this week I didn't want to ask the question because uh, this thing in me that says, well, Neil, what about this? And what about this? And like, well, I got to, I'm asking you, this is just between you and God. And, and the way you know is what I spend my time, money, my energy on, what, you know, what would my kids or what would my my, my friends or family, what would they say? So you just, God loves you. He can't love you. And let me say again, let's be clear about the gospel here. God cannot love you any more than he loves you right now because of Christ, right? You see, this is simply about a dream to win um, championships, okay? This is simply about a dream that says nothing beats knowing Christ and that when Paul looked at his life, he said, man... All my religious accomplishments, all my family background, everything I did before, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. So out of that, I just want you to close your eyes right now. Holy Spirit, say something to me here, okay? What am I devoting my life to?
it hits me right here in this moment, Lord, if there's anything just that we're just missing that you've drafted us on your team for, I, I just pray right now that you would light a little fire in us for that, a big fire. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, dissatisfaction, devotion. My, here's my next D word, determination, okay? Determination. And again, the text for me is what is driving this church. I want you to know this. In verse 14, Paul says, I, what's the word, church? Verse 14, I say it, press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. He's already said that word press in verse 12. He also said it in verse, 16, in verse 6 when he says, I'm pursuing the churches because I want to put them to death. It is the word of a e hunter eagerly pursuing his uh, prey. This is the intensity that every athlete knows when they're at the level of Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors. This idea of determination of saying, I want it and I'm going to use every bit of energy I have to get it. You know, Steph Curry, y'all, has had, he's made this determination that he wants to shoot 40% from the three point line and 50% from the field. Now, remember the picture with him and LeBron James? Maybe, can we put that picture up again, Lauren, with uh, Steph and LeBron James? Okay, he wants to shoot 50% from the field with LeBron James on top of him, right? Okay? That's his determination. And it says, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So here's the thing. That goal was literally talking about when you were a runner and you were running to the finish line and there was a post there. And if you crossed that post first, at the end, a herald would call out your name, but not just your name, would call out your father's name. And not just your father's name, he would call out your country's name. That there was a lot riding on the line. And that when a runner, you know, we think of an individual athlete, it wasn't just him and his glory on the line. It was the glory of his community. And that God is looking for a group of people that are determined to pursue Christ's heart for the whole community. <sighs> you know, I look at some people here and you know what? You might not think God has drafted you and you have incredible spiritual gifts, but, but I want to tell you, I am here today because of some other people in my life that just their pursuit of Jesus, their determined pursuit of Jesus was creating a wake so great that I couldn't avoid but to jump right in it and ride that wave. And I believe there's some people here that God wants to use you in that way. Paul says, I press on toward this goal. You know, when I think about a runner, when I think about Paul, when I think about Curry just doing what he does, showing up every day, you know what I realize? There's nothing casual about the picture Paul's painting here, right? Right? Really, maybe that's it. Casual is the opposite of being determined. Casual is just kind of wandering church on Sunday and kind of saying, okay, you know, let me decide if I like the entertainment or not this morning. And I, I, I heard somebody say this one time years ago. So, y'all, I think this is like 20 years old. Casual Christians are always looking for ways to do the minimal amount of cross-carrying. Casual Christians have as their primary goal that they want to avoid not living up to the call of the Word of God. They ask questions like this. Should I tithe on the gross or the net? Do I have to serve to be a member here? Again, this is what I heard a pastor say 20 years ago. People who say nothing beats knowing Christ to really live that out are determined. I wonder, y'all, I, 
I imagine Steph Curry doing this. I imagine him, and I actually know it's true because of an illustration I'm going to share with you on the next point, laying in bed at night thinking, how can I shoot just a little better? You ever lay in bed at night and say, how can I know Jesus just a little better? So here's my question under this one. On a scale of one to ten, you know what, you with the Holy Spirit, you judge, you, ain't, you don't have to share this with anybody. I just want us to take stock on a scale of one to ten in light of what you've heard, the picture Paul paints, how determined am I to live in a way that says, nothing beats knowing Christ. You take a moment, close your eyes, be with the Lord here. So, Lord, I, I know that in my own heart that none of this happens without you being the first mover. So, Lord, we, we just say, you, you draw us. You, you give us a, a passion for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we've got the word dissatisfaction, devotion, determination. Now, discipline, okay? Discipline, discipline for godliness, is of great gain. Discipline, I'm talking about your habits. I'm talking about systems. I'm talking about Paul when he says in verse 15, let us therefore as many as are mature. So he's talking to the person who thinks you, you're gonna get it together here. He says you have this mindset and if anything you have a different mindset, God will reveal that also to you. Now this is very interesting to me that he says, listen, you need to have a mindset that says nothing beats knowing Christ. If anything, you have a different mindset, God is going to reveal that to you. Here's what this says to me. That apparently, as God is looking at our lives, that if our mindset is nothing beats having a great family, or nothing beats having a great job, or nothing beats having comfort, or nothing beats... You can fill in the blank that Paul thinks, if necessary, God will give you an attitude adjustment. How does he do that? Let me be really clear about this. I am not saying that God is the author of evil or intentionally brings bad stuff in your life. I'm not going to go that far. I do not know the mysteries of God. But I do know this. Bad stuff, difficult things, loss, pain, suffering happens in this world. And you say, of course, Neil, we read the news this week. And, and here's what I know, that God loves to use those things, that God loves to take all things and work them together for the good of those who love him and are called to his purposes. You know, when Paul says, I missed this, when Paul says, I haven't laid hold of it yet, you know what, you know what? He, he says, I want to lay hold of that for which also God laid hold of for me. You know what God laid hold of for Paul? that he would be conformed to the image of Jesus, Romans chapter 8. You know what Paul, God has already laid hold of for you? That you would be conformed to the image of Jesus. And he's just saying, go ahead and experience as much of you can right now. Next verse here, it says, however, let us keep living by the same standard to which we have obtained. Keep living. This is talking about your daily actions, working it out. Keep living, keep doing it. Here's the thing. Think about this. No Olympic runner who's worth anything is going to say, I'm content. Or let themselves go backward because they're looking at shaving fractions of seconds. Y'all, there was a Wall Street Journal article that just came out recently that said Steph Curry got to a place. Here's the guy laying awake at night trying to get better. He got to a place where he's like, in practice, so often I swish the ball. I don't know how to get any better. Nice problem to have. And, 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 and he catches hold of this lady who was a cancer researcher, used NASA rocket science technology to track 20 million basketball shots. And, and, and this lady finds out that 
you know, you can make a swish and then not go dead center through the hoop. Like you can be three inches off and it still be a swish. You can actually be five inches off and still be a swish. But if you do that enough, you're going to be satisfied with the five inches off, which means you're going to have seven, eight, and miss the ball a lot too. So Steph Curry gets a hold of this. He's got this technology where he'll have practice sessions where he will do this. He's got a bug in his ear and he's shooting. And if he's five inches off, it says five inches off. And he said, that's not good enough. He only accepts three inches or less off dead center. If it's more than three inches, he shoots it again. That's called discipline. That's called waking up in the morning with a plan. That's called saying, when I get up, I'm not just wondering, what am I going to do today? Let us keep living by the same standard to which we have obtained. And observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. So here's my question, church, again. And I, I think I've said this in one form or fashion every time this sermon. But here's my question under this eye of discipline. What will I do tomorrow to get to know Jesus better? If you are wondering, will I memorize my Bible or not? You will not. If you're wondering, will I read my Bible to, tomorrow or not? You will not. If you're wondering, will I pray tomorrow or not? You will not. And let me say this. I am sure there are days where Paul, he was a real human being, didn't feel like doing it. I'm sure... Um, Steph Curry, there are days he doesn't feel like it. And I'm telling you, yesterday, in light of all this going on, I was kind of just feeling very distracted and didn't want to. And, I was, and here's what I did. I just said, right now, what I can do is I can review the scripture in Philippians one time. And then I'll go from there. So let me just give you a moment. Close your eyes. You, you just decide right now. What will I do tomorrow to get to know Jesus better? Okay, here's our words. Dissatisfaction, devotion, determination, discipline, and our last word is destiny. Okay. Y'all, I'm telling you, some people are going to come to me after and say, why would you talk about Steph Curry so much? Because Paul was painting a picture. T truly, he's, tr he's painting a picture to inspire you to be intentional. So here's one last picture, Steph Curry, with some very nice rings on. Those aren't his wedding rings. After every NBA championship, he takes a picture like this. I know that he is dreaming up for himself a destiny in his mind right now where he's going to be taking that picture again with a fourth ring. I don't know if you're cheering him on or not. I don't care. They beat the Mavs, right? Um, but I want you to hear this. This is another example of how the world goes after things, not criticizing but where we in our own minds dream up our own destiny and think we create our own destiny. I want you to hear this, Christian. We are not dreaming up our own destiny or creating our own destiny. We're talking about a destiny God has for you. And Paul speaks about it in this way when he says in verse 18, before you think you get there, understand this, many walk of whom I often told you and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. You know, when Paul says, I tell you and I'm weeping, it's not a little trickle tear going down his face. It is a gut-wrenching sob. And if Paul, the pastor here, if it, if it tears him up, to see people who Jesus has shed his blood for, drafted on his team, that, that, to see these people become beer-guzzling spectators in the stands of life. If it tears Paul up, imagine what it does to Jesus. Does Jesus care about your destiny and about how you're moving toward it right now? C can I ask you, do you think he does? He does. He, he really does. And therefore, 
Paul writing, inspired by the Spirit of Jesus, says of these people, their end is destruction and their God is their appetite. See, here's what it is. He's saying, these are people who do not have a mindset. They're not being intentional about that. Their God is their appetite. Literally, it's this. It's they're operating out of the hollow of their stomach. Their appetite, their gut, just whatever drives them. Instead of stepping back and saying, whoa, nothing beats knowing Christ. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite. And here's what's scary, y'all, whose glory is in their shame. Because when you decide to be a beer-guzzling spectator in the stands of life, you, you know what? You find yourself content. And you think it's funny. And you do what people are doing all the time now, including people who've said, I'm a believer in Jesus. You call evil good, and you call good evil. Who glory in their shame. And here's the deal. Look what Paul says. Look at the words. Y'all, I'm not making this stuff up when I say mindset matters. They set their minds on earthly things. Now, here's the beauty of this, church. I want you to hear this. The Christian life is not all about what we don't do. It's not all about saying, oh, we're not going to be evil. It's about where our mind goes. Look at verse 20. Paul says, for our citizenship is in heaven. You know, this is, you know, this is part of the athletic imagery. You might not see it, but the runner had to be a certain citizen of a certain country. He was representing that country. Our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want everybody to stand here for a moment with me. Because, yeah, I, wa I really want you to understand this term, eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the, the Greek word here is actually a little tricky and hard to understand because it is a root word with three prefixes put on it, okay? Y'all don't worry about those people on the stage, okay? Um, they're my friends. I invited them to come up at this time. <laughs> eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the idea. How many here have played ball sports growing up? Any kind of ball sport, tennis, basketball, soccer. Hey, Y'all know what the ready position is? Have you heard of that before, the ready position? Okay, just imagine Serena Williams on the tennis court, you know, and she's got her knees just a bent a little bit. That's what you're going to do. Just bend your knees a little bit. We're at a retreat, okay? We're not at church. Uh, we got our knees bent a little bit, and our head is up. And, you know, Serena Williams is on the other side of the tennis court for, from you. The best thing you better do is just get out of there as quick as you can, right? Um, uh, we're set, and this is the idea of this word, that our head is up and we're looking. Is he coming? Oh, man, is he here? Is, is this the day? Because I long to breathe the air of heaven, right? This is my destiny. Is, is this the day that I'm going to stand by, uh, beside him and I'm going to see him face to face? Is this the day that all this suffering is going to go away and we're not going to hear any more reports of kids being hurt, whether it's inside the church or outside the church? Is this the day? Because I'm living like I have a destiny. And it's why I say, nothing beats knowing Christ. I can't hear you. Nothing beats knowing Christ. I got bad ears. Nothing beats knowing Christ. Amen.